Hello, my name is Katie Groves, and I am a survivor of United States military mind control experimentation and programming. In this video, I'm going to talk about a phenomenon called gridlocking, and I want to pause and say, if you've not done so already, I ask that you please watch the first two parts of my deprogramming series, links in the description below for disclaimers and safety measures you can take while watching these videos. So what is grid locking and how does this relate to exponential fragmentation? And how can it be healed? Well, in my last video, I talked about splitting factories, how parts of me were split indefinitely for years on end in internal structures called splitting factories. And when parts are in these splitting factories, these parts are not actually used by the programmers for any certain task. They're just split endlessly. But some parts that are exponentially fragmented for me were only fragmented to a certain degree. And then they were typically put into internal structures called gridlocks where they were then programmed to the programmer specifications. So a grid lock, it's an internal structure where a subsystem of my system, right, a certain group of parts are organized into rows and columns, and each part is assigned a coordinate. And each coordinate is given a label of on or off. Now, what each coordinate represents, what each part in the system contains, is certain attributes, thoughts, feelings, memories, likes, dislikes, feelings, that the individual part contains. And why grid locking is useful to programmers is because it enables them to control very finely the attributes that a particular dissociative part possesses or displays at any given moment. It enables a part to be extremely fluid and flexible in their presentation and yet at the same time be extremely tightly controlled. So when parts are assigned an on or off label, what this means is that a part is either associated when they're on with the overall whole of the part or they are dissociated from the overall whole of the part. And I'm going to give an example of this so that this might make more sense. So let's say I have a part of myself who is programmed for sexual slavery. And the programmers want her to be able to present in whatever way each client wants. And they want her to be able to intuit this to an extremely fine degree. Perhaps the client specifies more or less what they're looking for. Perhaps they don't. But this dissociative part is supposed to be able to figure out exactly what they're looking for to the most minute detail and then present that. So the ultimate chameleon personality. This part can not only be altered by her programmers to associate with or dissociate from various attributes at any given time, but she can be run by internal programmers who are there to discern what the client wants and then turn on or off any attribute that they think the client wants or does not want to see. And this is, of course, extremely traumatic for the part. She's constantly shifting and changing and not knowing why. And of course, having to engage in extremely traumatic situations and sexual slavery. The idea is, again, that the person can be most tightly controlled as possible. So what happens, though, in the internal structure for this part as her system changes? Every time a part is turned on, she integrates with, or more accurately, experiences a degree of integration slash co-consciousness with that part. And when a part is turned off, she dissociates from it. But when she dissociates from a part, the part doesn't just freeze or go dormant. 
It doesn't just shut down. The part is actually tortured continuously. This is at least what happened to me. It may be different for others. But my system was very hell-bent on not being programmed. So an extreme amount of torture and force was used on me that may not have had to have been used on others to successfully program them in this way. So these parts, for me, whenever they were turned off, were programmed for torture and locked up so they couldn't break free. So what have I done to deprogram this, to integrate from this, as this video is about integration? Well, the first thing I had to learn was that each programmed part within a gridlock system has a key. There's a key to turn them on or off. There's also a key to remove them from the system and take them to a blank slate place within the system where they're not experiencing anything. And then they can be on standby for the programmer to decide what to do with them next. So if a part is causing trouble or they want that part to be even more dissociated from the system, than they were before for whatever reason, there is a mechanism to take that part into another part of the system out of the gridlock altogether and wait to be reprogrammed. This is very useful for me because while this was built by my programmers for them and their use of me, I can manipulate this by going inside, accessing the keys, and removing parts from the gridlock. Typically what I'll do is I'll go inside and I'll remove a key part from the gridlock, no pun intended, a principal part that holds the system together. There's usually one part that was the first part to be created that holds the most power over the system. It holds the memories of how the system was created, how they were split, and what they were split for. And if I can find this core part of the system and remove it from the gridlock, the gridlock will typically collapse. The parts will be in chaos. And then very quickly, I can implement various, various techniques to subdue them and calm them down and work with their trauma. And um, in my last video about splitting factories, I talked about multiple tools that I use um, for shutting down the splitting of the factories, all of which I use for the grid locking once the system collapses. So if you watch that video, you may get some useful tools about that. So once the system collapses and the trauma flows freely, right, all this trauma will rush in and all these parts will start to reassociate with each other. Because my natural tendency is to reassociate and to process my trauma. Mind control programming is an extremely toxic, hostile process on my system. It's not what I naturally want to do is to follow the programming. My natural desire is to be integrated and whole and to process my trauma and my emotions and to be healthy. So by removing some of the structural aspects of my programming, the programming will often collapse and then give my parts opportunity to do what they naturally wanted to do all along, which is to reassimilate and process their trauma. And oftentimes with the grid locking, these parts are more advanced than others. Parts with really complex gridlocked systems are often older and more capable of healing themselves so I can kind of step back and let them reassimilate. These are very advanced parts of my brain. But I'm still often needed to facilitate the integration process and to work with them. And I've posted many videos in my deprogramming series about how I deprogram and heal parts that I think would be useful, possibly for someone who's trying to do this themselves. Okay, I hope this all made sense. I felt really triggered making this video. It's really painful for me. Part of why that is is because one of the last times I was reprogrammed, I was gridlocked and I became conscious of the gridlocking and I felt the pain of the dissociated parts. I was fully co-conscious with what they felt when they were being turned off in the torture and it was one of the most horrific things I've ever experienced in my life I was consciously living that torture without the kind of dissociation I normally would have experienced so it's hard to talk about but I hope that this has been helpful and many blessings to all.